All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our session, Radio News and Journalism Skills, Views and Other Careers. And we're going to be hearing from Mr. Patrick Linfors. He is a Christopher Columbus Class of 1994 graduate, a degree in TV journalism, FIU 98 reporter, anchor and editor for the news radio, 610 WIOD in South Florida from 1998 to 2005. Since 2005, he's worked in nonprofit with the Boy Scouts of America, currently serving as Scouts Executive CEO with the Garden State Council, BSA in South Jersey. All right. Hi, Mr. Learnfor. How are you doing? I'm good, Kadisha. Thanks so much for, uh, for the opportunity to be here today. All right. Take it away. <laughs> all right. Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is a tremendous honor to be with all of you today, the future, future storytellers of America. Uh, I'm honored to have been asked to, to speak at this STN National Convention, uh, and thanks to Kadisha for serving as our moderator today. This is obviously a great organization uh, with great people. So as you heard, uh, my name is Patrick Linfors, and I'm a local CEO for the Boy Scouts here in South Jersey, uh, and you're probably wondering what a nonprofit executive has to offer to a group of highly motivated high school students who want to pursue careers in uh, journalism and communication. Well, I, I hope by sharing my story with you, you can snag a few nuggets to help you as you chart your course and take your next big steps. So experience in journalism uh, ultimately provides you with some skills that I believe uh, cut across professions. Uh, these are the skills that no matter where you go on your journey, I'd say take these with you. Obviously the ability to communicate, right? verbal, written, those social skills, give you the power to tell a compelling story. And that's gonna help you no matter where you go. But obviously communication is a two-way street and listening is just as powerful. Um, when someone is communicating to you, finding the root of their message and what the messenger is trying to provide is super critical. And then of course, thinking about today's world, finding the facts, right? Having a healthy skepticism, the power of discernment. Those are skills you wanna carry with you forever. And then look, everybody on this call is gonna have technical skills far greater than mine because of the era you're growing up in uh, and understanding and utilizing that latest technology is gonna help you across all professions. When I was coming up in news, the, uh, the phrase, I, and I don't know if I picked pick this up in the newsroom or in school, but the phrase knowing a little about a lot. And I think that today, you really need to know a lot about a lot, but knowing a little about a lot will get you far. Um, I grew up in Miami, Florida, and uh, my extracurriculars uh, were always two things. It was Little League Baseball, and it was Scouts. I'm an Eagle Scout. I grew up hiking through the swamps of the Everglades and snorkeling in the Florida Keys and canoeing on the Peace River. Uh, that experience in Scouts, plus 13 years of Catholic education, plus two older brothers, plus a father who was a retired military officer and a mother who professed a love for the theory of tough love, uh, I was provided ample amounts of the wonderful gift known as character education. Uh, as a result, one of my favorite classes in journalism school was ethics, that art of character-based decision-making. And so here are some of the skills I believe you can pick up in journalism school and again, take with, take with you uh, throughout life. Look, uh, the golden rule, right? Treat people how you wanna be treated. Uh, it's really important to understand that the results of your work are really, really important, but how you do your job is just as important. I'd encourage everybody on the call certainly to find your compass, whether that's the scout law or the four-way test from Rotary or uh, the Bible, whatever your compass is, find it and stick with it uh, as, you, as you go about uh, your journey in life. Surrounding yourself with the right people. You know, you don't get to pick your family, but you get to pick your friends. So, uh, you know, choose wisely. And uh, character, remember, is what you do when no one is looking. So let's dive in uh, a little bit. My understanding is that all of our participants are uh, high school students or maybe middle school students getting ready to go to high school. Well, this is my high school. Uh, this is Christopher Columbus High School in Miami. It's an all boy Catholic high school. Uh, and this is what it looks like today. Uh, here's what I remember 
from the early 90s. Uh, this is uh, this is Mr. Linsky teaching the legendary U.S. foreign policy class, and of course, that's my senior picture there, uh, class of 94. Um, it's always fascinating to me what inspires people to make choices in life. Uh, in hindsight, I can see now I was always into news. Uh, I was consumed with news about the big elements of my early life, the presidential elections of the 80s and 90s, the first Gulf War, Hurricane Andrew, the OJ trial. Um, I made spoof videos with my friends like Saturday Night Live. I was always the MC or the news guy. Uh, I watched and read more news than my friends for sure. And every time I was in the car with my dad, we always listened to news on the radio. But in high school, the thought had not occurred to me to work in news. I wanted to be an actor. And uh, the guy with the white spray painted hair there in the middle, that's me as Dr. Van Helsing in Dracula. Now that's not to say there weren't opportunities at Columbus to get news experience. CCNN, the Christopher Columbus News Network started while I was in high school. Uh, today, of course, it's a nationally recognized award-winning program. Uh, in the early 90s, it was just some guys doing some morning announcements. In fact, fun fact for the fellow explorers that may be on the call today, in my senior year, one of my best friends was class president, Ron James, and he would bring me on CCNN to provide some comic relief. And one morning, I got a little too silly, and Mr. Canella kicked me out of the studio, and I was banned from CCNN for life. <laughs> uh, I ended up attending Florida International University in Miami, and at the outset, the goal was theater. Uh, my freshman year, I took Theater 101. Uh, the professor for that class was head of the department and made all the decisions as to what students uh, could major in theater. And this 101 class was a prereq, right? So it was there he made the decision. At the end of the semester, he would meet with each student and help them decide their fate, could they enter the major or not. So at the end of the semester, I met with the professor very excited and he said, quote, Patrick, you are a great writer. I said, oh, professor, that means so much to me. Thank you so much. What do you think about my acting? And he said, Patrick, you are a great writer. <laughs> Towards the end of my sophomore year, uh, I had not declared a major. The counselor's uh, office called me in and said, hey, I needed to make a decision. I was handed a piece of paper with all the majors listed on it, and I examined each one. And I was blessed to have one of those moments of clarity when I saw broadcast journalism as a degree in the College of Sciences. It hit me, that's where I needed to be. And it was a great fit. Uh, here's a class where we had to interview a local news anchor. This is the infamous Rick Sanchez, who was a titan of the time on Channel 7 WSBN. Uh, I learned how to write, shoot, edit, produce uh, documentaries my senior year. Check out the size of that camera. <laughs> uh, my team did a project on land ownership in the Everglades. We did get an A on that project and I had to sign my life away promising I would not drop that camera in the swamp. I didn't. Uh, and all of my classes were focused on TV news, uh, production, writing, documentary. Uh, there, were, there was no exposure to radio. I loved radio. I listened to radio news with my dad. I listened to baseball games on the radio. I was a big fan of sports radio at the time. And, and here's a moment in preparing for tonight that I find very telling. Uh, it's the 1997 World Series. The Florida Marlins are hosting the Cleveland Indians. We're walking up to Joe Robbie Stadium. And what do I take a picture of? Uh, I stopped to take a picture of retired baseball player Warren Cromarty doing his live show on 560, 560 WQAM before the game, I yelled, yo, Crow, and, and he waved back. Graduated with that degree in 98, met some wonderful people along the way. Uh, one of my friends in this picture is uh, uh, Terry Florin. She got into the public relations side of the business. She's today a communications manager for Miami-Dade County and has been an active blogger and opinion writer for 20 years. The CCNN guys may recognize uh, Maribel Rodriguez at the top there. Uh, today, she's a weekday morning anchor for CBS4 in Miami. I'm not sure if it's still the case, 
But back then, to earn the degree, you had to intern in news. Uh, most of my classmates interned at television stations because that's what we were learning. But that pull of radio had gotten to me at that point, and I asked counselors if I could satisfy the requirement with a radio internship. I made the case that because none of our classes were about radio, this would help me expand my educational experience. Uh, they bought it. <laughs> they, they said I could do it and uh, approved it. So I applied and interned at News Radio 610 WIOD there in South Florida. And this is a moment that ultimately uh, blazed a trail I, I wasn't expecting. Uh, I fell in love with the radio work and uh, I was blessed that they gave me a full-time job out of college. I spent seven great years there, started as an in-house studio reporter, I went on to serve as the uh, Miami street reporter covering city of Miami politics and crime. Um, this is a shot on the right there uh, out at Stiltsville with Congresswoman Ileana Ross Leighton when I was a street reporter. I became an editor and a morning reporter. I did the morning news for Kenny and Footy on Y100 for several years and finished my run as the morning anchor alongside Natalie Rodriguez who is still there today. Uh, I made the occasional appearance to promote the station. Uh, here's Kirsten Kendrick and I at a Marlins game. As you can see, we're beating back the fans there. Uh, no one came and saw us. <laughs> Kirsten is a fantastic anchor and reporter, and she is still in the radio business today. She is the morning anchor for KNKX in Seattle. In 99, President Clinton came to Miami. I was asked to serve as the radio pool reporter uh, feeding out clips and stories to affiliates nationwide. Uh, this was a tremendous experience. Got to ride in the motorcade and follow the president around all day. Uh, a few years later, I did get the chance to interview uh, President Clinton one-on-one -on -one over the phone when his memoir debuted. In April of 2000, Elian Gonzalez was removed by federal authorities in Little Havana and returned to Cuba. Miami news had been consumed by the story of this miracle little boy for six months. Uh, for my part, uh, I was sent to Little Havana that day and reported live all morning on the reaction. Along with the protesters, I was tear gassed, uh, pushed back by riot police. Uh, I had just turned 24 years old. This was a new experience for me and, and uh, I'll never forget it. This launched a period of time where most of the major national stories had significant ties and connections to South Florida. Just six months later, the night of the 2000 presidential election, our news director said, let's let the kid anchor tonight, shouldn't be a big deal. Uh, like every reporter that night, we worked very late. Gore and Bush were both declared winners at various points. And for the next two months, the eyes of the nation again came to South Florida as Miami-Dade tried to count hanging chads and in Palm Beach County, we had the butterfly ballot. And then, of course, 9-11. I was in the studio that morning as a reporter. When the first plane hit, the AP wire reported a small plane had hit the World Trade Center. Uh, I reported that on Y100 and WIOD before the second plane hit. My editor asked me to call the Wall Street Journal, which fed us business reports. Their building was right across the street from the World Trade Center in New York. I hopped into my little studio. I got a reporter on the phone and started recording our conversation. The board I used was in front of me and, and the computer was about eye level. I was using cool edit <laughs> at the time. Uh, behind me and out the window of my studio was our newsroom and a bank of TVs. And we all watched together as the second plane uh, crashed into the second tower. And I could hear the explosion through the phone line along with gasps from uh, people there in that office. And of course, the reporter then said they were being evacuated and hung up. It was the only day in my news career where I went home, turned on the TV and, and watched news all day and, and cried like most Americans. Two weeks after 9-11, the Y100 morning team made a trip to New York to do a show from their studios as a sign of solidarity and to report back to Miami what was going on. I was asked to go. Uh, we were there for just 36 hours, but I was able to get around the city and interview residents. I fed recorded stories all over the country and did live spots in, in multiple states. It was a, 
It was a powerful time. Uh, the 9-11 investigation went on to have many Florida ties. Uh, the terrorists learned how to fly planes at schools in the state. We had lots of local stories related to the follow-up concerns about ricin attacks and that type of thing. In addition to major stories like, like Elyon, the election and 9-11, uh, we got to have some fun too. Uh, at the time, 610 WIOD was the home of the Fort Lauderdale Air and Sea Show. So our team of reporters got to experience some incredible moments to promote the event. Here's the the great anchor and reporter, Brooke Austin. She and I got to fly in the Goodyear blimp. Brooke is also still in the business. She is a TV reporter for WZTV Fox 17 in Nashville. In a post 9-11 world, I had the good fortune of flying in a plane and landing on the uh, Navy aircraft carrier, the Harry S. Truman. Uh, I spent the, no the night aboard uh, the carrier and had a great time with news colleagues like Willard Shepard, uh, from NB who still works at uh, NBC6, uh, had the opportunity to interview the carrier's commanding officer in his quarters. And it was moments and experiences like these in my young life that helped me understand that no matter the position of leadership, uh, people are people. And while you need to be prepared for important conversations with important people, treating them like humans uh, rather than positions, can be a difference maker and it allows you to build relationships with people. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it puts everybody on the same playing field, which is, which is pretty cool if they're receptive to it, of course. Uh, because WIOD was owned by Clear Channel, we had seven radio stations under one roof. So when the morning show guys, the big giants like Paul and Ron at Zeta or Kenny and Footy at Y100 brought in big name guests, we got often to meet them and do interviews uh, of our own. So here's Victoria Jackson from Saturday Night Live and the great Leslie Nielsen from the Naked Gun movies. Did my one and only report as a movie critic uh, for a Heather Graham movie called The Guru, got to meet her. Uh, and then I got to meet one of my music idols. Uh, Steven Van Zant is the guitarist for Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. Carmen Electra was in studio as was the great actor Robert Duvall. I have a slightly R-rated story about Carmen Electra. So if we have time, maybe in questions, I can tackle that, but we'll, we'll, let, we'll let that one lie. <laughs> and I had to put this one in because this is my wife's personal favorite. When I got to meet The Rock, she's still mad at me 20 something years later that I didn't invite her to the studio that day. Uh, as a reporter, you get asked to help the community from time to time and I jumped at the chance. Uh, this is a readathon event to support the local library. Uh, I mentioned on the air one day that I'm an Eagle Scout and uh, like any good nonprofit, somebody was listening and snatched, uh, snatched that information and ran with it. The local Scout Council there in South Florida reached out to me and I ended up emceeing uh, the recognition and fundraising events and even recorded their office uh, phone line messages at the time. The biggest avenue for service though came with, with a group called the Castaways Against Cancer through connections at Columbus High School. Uh, this is a team of guys who kayaks every summer from Miami to Key West to raise funds to fight cancer and honor those who have fought the fight. Uh, the original foursome included three Columbus teachers uh, and myself, a Columbus grad, and WIOD let me cover the event each day from the water. So I loaded up all this radio gear. You can see it in Pelican cases there on my kayak. Um, and... Uh, and for five years covered the trip uh, from the water for our listeners, pretty cool experience. As the, year with the, as the years with the castaways marched on and I left the news profession, I served as the team's captain and, and that skill set from news helped serve the team in many ways as spokesperson, as advocate, uh, interviewee uh, and event MC. Uh, the castaways have been profiled by the Miami Herald uh, most of the Miami TV news channels and uh, throughout the paddling world. Uh, of course, our favorite coverage has been from CCNN Live. Uh, they've created award-winning documentaries about the castaways. And, and I know the team, which again is made up of many Columbus graduates and teachers, is so proud uh, that students uh, stay connected with us. Uh, and the castaways fight on. Uh, since 2000, the team has raised $1.3 million dollars. Uh, to fight cancer. And this summer, our team will launch its 22nd annual trip, the 2021 Blackjack Tour. All donations are being matched and will support the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center at the University of Miami.
In 2005, I made the difficult decision to leave news. The only other career I had considered was working for the Boy Scouts of America. I had close friends who had gone into the profession out of college. In fact, I turned the job down six times before um, we got offer number seven and we said yes. Uh, my wife and I moved our family to Central Florida, just outside Orlando, and uh, started a new career and a new life. Uh, without a doubt, the skill set I learned from journalism school all the way through that news career uh, helped me find my footing right away. I was able to communicate, listen, tell a story, and engage with people in positive ways that ultimately helped grow scouting in the areas I served. Uh, working in nonprofit is very much a sales job, uh, and the skill set provided by experiences in communication help provide uh, a tremendous foundation for that type of work. The ability to, to speak news uh, helped us connect young people in scouting with uh, journalists in their communities. Uh, here's a group of first graders in Jacksonville meeting the nightly anchors at CBS 47, Fox 30 Action News. Uh, that was a ton of fun. Uh, and like with the castaways, uh, I've been able to serve as a spokesman and advocate for scouting in all my stops. This one was, was just funny, talking about the positive character attributes of scouting in a bar-like studio on Buzz TV, uh, very subtle. Repeating the scout law in front of a Guinness sign is uh, a unique part of uh, things I've done. Uh, I got to rally the media in Jacksonville around a crazy event called Over the Edge, a fundraiser where Community members repel from the top of a downtown building. This is my, my son, Christopher, repelling from 12 stories up at the age of 13. And 18 months ago, we moved from Florida to South Jersey. Uh, I'm about 20 minutes from Philadelphia, and I'm now working with a team of volunteers and staff to grow scouting in South Jersey. You know, the experiences in news, in scouting, and the castaways have allowed me to connect and give back through service organizations like Rotary International. Uh, I've done hundreds of presentations to community leaders and Rotary clubs all over Florida and Jersey about scouting and the castaways. And you can bet that experience and news helped with the writing, the presentation, and, and the technology to support it, even though certainly I'm a little dated. <laughs> Look, while I, officially, I have officially been out of the news business for 15 years, I remain very much a news junkie, a news consumer. And I still prefer radio news over TV news. No offense, guys. Um, I'm a big consumer of podcasts, and, and this is just a sampling of some of the stuff I listen to. I encourage you to stay hungry news consumers throughout your lives. Uh, and don't be afraid to get out of your lane, politically or otherwise, right? Goes back to that axiom of knowing a little about a lot. Helps you whether you're in this business or beyond the business. Uh, look, I know my story is specific to me, and, and I must sound like a dinosaur to some of you, uh, but I do hope uh, sharing it helped in some way. And I get that the environment you're about to enter is certainly different 20 plus years later, right? A global pandemic, a sluggish economy, and an even more diverse news landscape you got political tribalism and people seeking their news in news silos, right? Uh, but I would argue that those are the reasons why we need quality journalism more than ever. Uh, people who strive to sharpen th this skill set and who make decisions and build relationships out of a foundation of character, the need for that has not changed. We need that and always will. And, and your attendance and focus here. Uh, this weekend is a step in the right direction, and I applaud you for doing it uh, and wish you a lifetime of happiness in the work. Uh, we all look forward to seeing what you can produce. And to my Columbus brothers on the call, Adelante. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity to participate. And with that, I'll, I'll open it up to any questions uh, we might have. All right. If you've got a question, could you please type it in the chat box or the q and I'm monitoring it. Um, but as we're waiting for questions to come in, what advice would you give them to get started and how can they stay um, not subjective, but just how can they like look at two sides of a story without the emotion and things like that involved? Oh, yeah. So uh, first of all, about getting started, you know, 
if journalism school is something you aspire to do, uh, you know, there's obviously a, a nation of great uh, journalism programs out there to choose from. And I, I would encourage that internship. Uh, uh, Kadisha, I don't know if I could share your story real quick. I think it's a, I think it's a good one. Uh, we were chatting before the meeting and uh, before the presentation, and she interned in news and, and made an educated decision that this wasn't the route she wanted to go on. She wanted to find her passions elsewhere. I interned in news and fell in love with it and, and made a run at it and it was my first career, right? So um, I would encourage you to, to, to go grab one of those internships, whether they pay or not, because that exposure is going to help you make that educated decision as to whether this is something you want to pursue or it's not. So I'd certainly encourage you. Journalism school isn't necessarily required. It's a good, good place to go uh, learn how to write, how to produce, how to edit. And, um, and certainly that foundation of ethics, but that internship was really, really key. I, I'd certainly encourage uh, folks, to, folks to do that. Uh, and then, yeah, it's a, it's a skill to, uh, to keep your emotions at bay, right? And I, I think I go back to the, the, one of the things I mentioned at the outset is that skill set of listening. If you can uh, work in all your conversations and relationships to just be a good listener, to focus on what the other person is trying to share, what they're trying to emote. They may be sending signals or messages without the specific words they're using. And that level of discernment that you can uh, hone will help you become a better news reporter. And the act of listening in and of itself will help keep uh, emotions at bay when you have to listen to multiple sides of the story. Sometimes it's not just two. Sometimes it's three or four, depending on the topic you're covering. Great answers. Okay, we have a question from, I believe this is Alyssa, and if I uh, mispronounce her name, deep apologies. She says, when script making, how do you make your script sound informal, but also not lose the audience's attention? Oh, great question. So, I, and I didn't share this in specific, but let, let me share it now. One of the reasons that I fell in love with radio, even though I had an education in television, was the writing. Because, you know, in TV, you got pictures, right? So pictures can help tell the story. In radio, your word choice is so, so critical uh, in, in, in telling the story. And then working in commercial radio, you're limited to... 15 second stories, 30 second stories, 45 second stories. And so you really got to get economical with the word choice. Um, and that skill set, that process of writing for radio really helped me economize speech and choose the right words to be descriptive without being uh, flamboyant and, and, and trying to grab people in. So in news, it's the lead, right? So you know, what is, what is the, that lead sentence that's going to grab the listener and bring them in uh, to the story? Uh, from what I remember doing, it was a present tense sentence and it was something that could be justified afterwards. So um, I'll give you a for example from this week. Uh, uh, Mitch McConnell voted to not convict, right? He voted not guilty in the impeachment trial, but immediately afterwards said, Donald Trump is responsible for the insurrection at the Capitol. So a lead there might be, Donald Trump is responsible for the insurrection at the Capitol. That's according to Mitch McConnell, who today voted to bop, 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 right? So it's the sentence that he said as the quote, and then followed up with the explanation as to why I just said that. So I don't know, was that getting too specific? <laughs> no, I think that was a great, uh, a great analogy. All right, anyone else? We've got about um, 10, 12 more minutes for our term, um, for our session. And I, would, I also went into radio. And so a lot of the same things, I agree. And, you know, it has changed so much, but you all have technology that you can utilize like podcasting and things like that, because no one can tell your story better than you could tell your story. 
Um, and so, you know, just grab the you know, camera, microphone, and just asking people like random stuff. And you'll, you, you know, when you learn to listen and actively listen, that's where you'll find a lot of the stories. Um, well, we don't have any other questions. Did you have any like last minute nuggets or just, you know, words of advice for the, the attendees? Yeah, I, I, I think you offered a good one there is, is getting out there, you know, in radio and having conversations with folks. Uh, just a fun little technical piece. So this is how old I am, or at least how old the radio station was at the time <laughs> when I joined it. I had, a, I had a, a big box tape recorder. And when I was reporting from the field and would go live on the air, I would literally have to take my cell phone and put it over the speaker on the, on the, uh, on the tape recorder and play back a soundbite. So I think the technology is probably better today, I would guess. I agree, I agree. Okay, well, we've got a lot of quiet ones. So hopefully everyone you're able to uh, take away. Now, um, Patrick, if they wanted to get a hold of you and maybe ask some questions or anything, how could they do that? Sure, uh, I, I'll throw my email in the chat. It's Patrick, uh, where's the chat? Patrick.castaways at gmail.com. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, there it is. I'll throw it in there. Castaways at gmail.com. If you want to learn more about the, uh, about the, uh, the castaways against cancer, um, obviously a lot of Columbus guys connected to that. I'll throw that in there too. And, uh, yeah. Okay. I'm going to drop it in with the attendees. All right. Well, we want to definitely thank you for taking out time of your day and your schedule. Um, hopefully attendees again, you know, we still have some room for questions. If you have anything, if not, please feel free to take down the information and uh, reach out. Um, one of the awesome things about STN is that um, our guest speakers have been more than willing to talk to young people. You may have a question that may come on a little bit later and even to reach out, or if you're in Florida or, or I'm, well, nope, you're not in Florida anymore, but you still have contacts in Florida that Absolutely. you might be able to, um, you know, uh, you know, hook someone up. But if you're in Jersey, you're in Jersey now. Um, yeah. Right outside of Philly. So we're in the media market for Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, and again, just reaching out. Hi, I'm a high school student. I would like to do this. A lot of people will take you up on that offer as long as you're, you, you know, you're willing to learn and you're being consistent about that. And colleges and resume material, they love stuff like that. <laughs> Happy to discuss it. Absolutely. All right. Well, there aren't any other questions. So I would just want to say again, thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you attendees for hanging out with us during this time. And um, we just hope that you all have a great evening and we'll hope to see you soon. Enjoy the conference. Thanks so much for the opportunity to be a part of it.